his pre-workout stuff in here. You just put it in there before you work out, light on fire, and there you go. One day they're gonna put me on who's number one. Anybody 40 some years old, 220 pounds, white to black belt, I don't even care. I have a dog now, I have Riddle. He's named after Tom Riddle from Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. So the shed is insulated now, and I heard insulation is bad for you, so I covered it up with plastic, <laughs> and, uh, and then cardboard, and then when we got a little bit more money, we covered that up with drywall. And I have to say, I did a fantastic job drywalling this building. You can see there's no holes, there's no cracks. It is literally perfect. This is the BGJ Fanatics money. Apparently people like all the Daisy Fresh stuff and the Buzzsaw stuff. They sent him a good teacher, so fuck yeah. <laughs> and we go in here. I paid to get all the wiring in the gym fixed. Because all of the outlets, every one of them, even the ones that still worked, had melted on the inside a little bit. We were able to do a lot of stuff for just like quality of living. Finally buy a washer and dryer in the gym. We can actually run all the fans at night now for all the visitors. Before, they had to just pile up in front of the industrial fan. We have like a heavy duty power line here. So I have my own dedicated line out here, which means I was able to hook up a fucking AC unit because I'm a spoiled bitch now. <laughs> So we went to the Toyota dealership in town. We're like, we want to get a new car. And they're like, well, we looked you up in the system and you are a ghost. You have zero credit. Not just bad credit, I had no credit. They couldn't even find me in the systems. Mike Zingas, the president of BGJ Fanatics, talked to the bank on our behalf. He basically gave them proof that we are people and we have an income and we're able to afford this. I've had a couple of Zoom meetings with different people on the Payne Express corporate. So. We'll see how that goes. I do think they're interested. If I get it, I would be the first person in Jiu-Jitsu history to be sponsored by a fast food company. I, I've essentially had like two or three dreams in my life. I've always wanted to live in the gym. My second life goal was I always wanted to have a dog in the gym. You know, I wanted to win a major title at every belt, and I've actually done that now. But what else do I do now? <laughs> What's next? <laughs> I'm pretty fucking happy. I'm lucky. I'm so lucky that my life has gone this direction. This is so incredible. So no complaints. To see him do all the stuff he's doing right now is, is huge and like it, it kind of lets us see like okay this process works. You don't really like believe until you see someone that goes from white to black and gets it done. So that was huge for us. Since the Daisy Fresh thing popped up, people just keep showing up at the gym from Mexico, Romania, Canada, just anywhere you can imagine. There's just people coming from all over chasing the dream. This is what I'm using to catch my women up all summer, you know? You're gonna hit me with that, bro. Oh! Oh, got him! I fucking got him! <laughs> I've always known that I wanted to ride a horse. So, one of my favorite all time movies is Gladiator. And there's a scene in Gladiator where Maximus and the Gladiators, they fight the barbarians from Carthage and he steals the horse and he rides around the entire arena slaughtering all of the other Gladiators. And that was the moment I saw that horse and I was like, I want to ride a horse. Wayne Hayer, he is essentially a concrete cowboy. The guy, he's from the south side in Chicago from the roughest of the rough places up there. I mean, there were people in Wayne's family, I believe were on the uh, America's top 10 most wanted list at one time. My brother is a very popular drill rapper. A lot of his music caused him like a lot of drama and shit like that, you know what I mean? And I just didn't want to get caught up in like the mix of all of that. So I was just like, you know what, man? I want to go somewhere completely far. I'm going to train full time. And I hit up my boy Alejandro, and he was like, come down to PSF, and that's, and that's what brought me down here. When he got here, he was like kind of half thug, half like a uh, college boy, you know what I mean? And it's like, he just kind of like slowly, like really gravitated towards this like country life, man. He changed his Instagram handle to the Grappling Horseman, and then he walked into the gym and he had a cowboy hat and boots, and we were like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what the fuck? And Wayne's like, what's up? And we're like, you're just coming in and changing your whole like scheme here or what? And he's like, yep, that's it, I'm a cowboy now. I'm riding horses, that's it. 
I've been here a year now, man, and like, I'm the most durable I've ever been. I'm the most flexible I've ever been. My jiu-jitsu, you know, it's just, it's way better than what it was anywhere else. I think one of the things about training here, because training here is like so intense, I feel like a lot of times, you know, you need something outside of training, you know, to look forward to. Oh yeah, watch out for the horse shit. This one is Rocky, and this is Ruger. He's missing his right eye, so I serve as like his second eye. Riding the horse, like, it helps like, like my posture. It opens up like my hips and stuff like that, and so like, it helps like with my flexibility and stuff. So like, I actually feel like horse riding actually helps me become a better grappler. And on top of that, I train at PSF. I wrestle with bulls and horses all goddamn day. So I'm at Domino's, and I meet this lady. I see that she has a saddle in her back seat. And I was like, I always wanted to learn how to ride. And she was like, here's my number. So I go down there. She was like, Wayne, you know what? If you can come on my uh, farm and do work whenever I need it to be done, you can ride for free all day, every day. And so I started going down there all day, every day. And where she stays, it's only like, the only people that are over there are the people that live on that property. And so when they see me over there and they see me riding her horses, at first one dude was like, did he fucking steal this horse? I had somebody uh, call the cops on me. I get weird looks for obvious reasons. I'm the fly on the buttermilk, you know what I mean? So I started riding about March, got the hat in April. Uh, then I went and got the, uh, the boots about a month later. Got the lasso about two months later. It's been a slow transition, you know what I mean, into this new identity, but uh, hey, I love it. You feel like you're kind of living the dream? You get to do horses and jujitsu? You know what, like, uh, yeah. I, I feel like I finally found happiness, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I was married for like four years, you know, and that didn't work out. I went to college, graduated, did the typical, you know, work the job thing, and my, my mom and dad were proud of me, but it didn't feel like success to me. I also wanted to do something that made me happy. And jujitsu was that, you know. And so to come down to, to train with PSF, you know, was kind of like the, the opportunity of like a lifetime. But then to like ride horses and to also train, I, I feel like a superhero. So yes, I am living the dream. Literally his life was on the line. There weren't days that went by that he had told me when he didn't feel like there was a, a good chance that he would be murdered in his community just because not anything that he did but just because the things that were going on around him, you know, like he saw the Daisy Fresh show on Flow, it like, you know, he, he knew that there was kind of a chance and a new life, you know, even though he was like in his uh, mid-20s, he could move down here and he could start all over, you know, a fresh start, and it's just such an incredible thing. My goal is now, I want to start my own gym and like a horse riding club, you know what I mean? Like kind of like side by side, build my own ranch from the ground up, you know what I mean? And, uh, and just deal with horses and jujitsu. I mean, I traded my Nike boots for horse riding shoes, you know, so like it's, uh, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to do probably till I can't walk anymore. So there's been a ton of new additions to the team. People coming from all over different countries, different belts, even world champions. The craziest of all the additions is probably none other than Mikey Musumeci. Mikey Musumeci is the best American Jiu Jitsu competitor of all time in the Gi. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It just is the statistic on paper. He's already won, you know, like multiple world championships in Gi, no Gi. Four time Black Belt World Champion, and he's, he's not even 30. The most successful American Black Belt in IBJJF history joining the Daisy Fresh team. You have homemade pasta here, or is it just yeah. whatever the shape of the homemade pasta is? If I could have that, double the portion size and just olive oil and parm cheese on the side. Okay, so just the noodles. Yeah. Okay. I once got kicked out of an all-you-can-eat pasta place. I went in and they asked me like, they're like, oh, it's an all unlimited pasta bowl. So I asked them like, what's the record? They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what's the most bowls someone's had a pasta? And I think they said like five. Anyways, six later. The manager comes up to me, he's like, your pasta bowls expire. I'm like, what do you mean? It's unlimited. He's like, you ate too much, you're done. And like, he was all mad at me and shit. Did you get a refund? No, but the place closed like a week later. <laughs> so Mikey only eats pasta and pizza. Mangia, mangia. <laughs> so he's trying to transfer this to Jacob Couch so we can get him buffered. It's not working so far. I've never had biscuits and gravy. Is it good? Would I like it? Biscuits and gravy? You've never had it? No. 
You gotta bring me into this culture. So we're here having lunch. Mikey hasn't ate for like seven days, so he's ready to go. <laughs> so basically, I'm able to eat whatever I want at night if I fast during the day. I'm super Italian, so uh, I always cook a lot of pizza and pasta every night after training. And that's my diet, and it keeps getting me skinnier and skinnier. This is so American to me to do this. Italians don't ever put salt in their food, like they don't add. America! Couch is rubbing off on me. <laughs> <laughs> my family from Sicily, we eat big portions and like just big amounts of food, southern Italy. Whenever I eat pasta at home and you get like the big cheese thing, I always eat the whole thing in one serving. <laughs> so I eat a lot of cheese, you know. I just wanted to buy it. It looks good. <laughs> I thought different shapes of pasta tasted different. They're just different shapes. I'm so disappointed. I don't know what that shit is, but it's good. It's like a ricotta blend. It's like soup. Probably ricotta. It's like soup cheese. Yeah, yeah, like ricotta. I love ricotta. Soup cheese. <laughs> We're gonna watch the Daisy Fresh, part one and part two. So, Mikey, you've seen this before, right? Oh yeah, this is like one of my favorite films from Flo, if not my favorite. Uh, I can't, I have to like be a little biased because Flo has an amazing film about me too. So, uh, but I really one. love the Daisy Fresh film. I don't know, I'm just chasing a dream, I guess. Oh, I was like their biggest fan. Like instantly, I was like, this is the best show ever. Isn't that how you started talking to Spatchy? Literally, like instantly. That was how I started talking to Spatchy. And then um, all these who's number ones, I kept meeting all the guys and then we just built a relationship. And then they came to Vegas and we hung out. And then after that, we were family. He's dedicated his life from the time that he's been just a youngin. He completely breaks down every angle, every aspect. He drills these things like six to eight hours a day, man. He puts the time into detail that most people aren't willing to do. He was incredible before he hollered at me. So, you know, at this level, it's more just about making like small adjustments, you know, and, and improving. So he's really willing to learn, you know, and, and, and be coached too, which someone at that level usually isn't for the most part, you know what I mean? But he's optimistic and, and wants to learn. And him and I just work really good together on like hammering stuff out. I've been talking to him every day and he's been giving me a lot of guidance in life, in training, and everything, you know, like he's such a good person and like such a good role model for me. Because how I live life with Jiu Jitsu, I really lack a lot of like people skills and things like that. Being able to talk to people more, you know, like uh, I get a lot of anxiety and like he's been helping me a lot with that and like getting out of my comfort zone more, doing things, you know, because I'm so like focused on training that it's hard for me to like go do other things. Now I'm trying to learn the other parts of life that I missed out on, you know. I just want to embrace my flaws and just try to like improve them as much as I can. It does bother me when people say that Mikey's autistic or whatever, you know, it's saying like something's wrong with his mind so it's easier for him. You know, he's a goofy kid, you know what I mean? But uh, dude, he busts his ass, man. He he puts a lot of time in. The things he does with his diet, the sacrifices that he makes, I just think a lot of people aren't willing to make them, you know? And I just think that's an excuse a lot of people use for Mikey. I think they just say, oh man, this guy's got this savant mind and you know, he's impossible to beat because of that. But at the end of the day, I just think he outworks most people. Rodney been really good through his on his path here. So Musa is trying to stay on this foot. And he got oh, it. Wow. Oh wow, that's it, Marco Musumeci. Can you believe it? 12 wow. seconds. 12 seconds to win his third world championship gold medal. The straight ankle lock he's so well known for smashes it on. 12 seconds. Can you believe it? got more black belt world titles than anyone in American history, right? Yeah. And now you're joining a team that trains in an out-of-business laundromat. But they train how I train. Like, how we represent jiu-jitsu is different than these standard corporate teams, you know? We just want to have fun. No ego, nothing, you know? And, like, that's what I love about jiu-jitsu. I've, I've literally been training my garage, you know? Like, that's how I've always trained my whole life, too. So it was just perfect. I used to think, wow, to be a Black Girl World Champion, you have to be miserable, you have to be suffering. Now it's just good vibes. I'm here competing, but I'm just laughing every second, you know, I'm just having fun and uh, I'm just enjoying it. 
<laughs> He's full of energy, man. He just puts off this positive vibe all the time, you know? Sometimes even when I've had a bad day, just hearing from him, you know, he, he's like, reminds me of my sons a lot, you know what I mean? It's nice to have him as a friend and a teammate, and I, you know, I'm, I'm stoked about the relationship. Adding, you know, like Mikey Musumici, Tammy Musumici, Dante Leon. Three black belt world champions to the to the crew. I think a lot of competition teams, you know, they're probably a little bit nervous now, you know, because before it's just the crew in Mount Vernon. When we won the, the Nogi Pans, it was like the points was just guys from Mount Vernon and then, you know, Tr Tristan from Chad Hawkins. So it's going to light the fire under a, a lot of people, you know, and now they know that we're bringing even more and the Daisy Fresh Army grows. Here at the end, no, the X legs. Good. You know why? Every because when you're time. here, the only counter they could try is to push this. And if I push this when you go here, you hook yeah, this leg and now you go on your forehead. Like and now bring this leg in. All right, slow down, slow down, slow down, Mike. Slow down. What now? So uh, Mikey and Couch get a little sweat in. Pre, who's number one? Mikey has a title fight against Richard Alcorn. And you know, uh, Mikey's coming off a loss, so he wants to kind of shock the world. He's got a move he's been working on, secret little heel hook knee bar set up. It's, uh, it's good. I think he's gonna land it and uh, get him back on the winning track, take the title belt, then move on. I have a goal to hit something this match, and I'm working it really hard right now. It's a secret, but uh, I'm really excited to work it, and we'll see like if I'm able to get it or not. Once it, gets, once it gets on my ankle, bro, my, heel, my foot can't move. That's what I'm saying, it's way better than heel. Like, this is the future heel. Yeah. Training with Mikey is like training with, like, if you ever played, like, Call of Duty, but, like, extra veteran mode. So, they know where you're gonna be, and the bullets are already going in that direction. So, wherever you move, he's already ahead of you, like, four or five steps. Yeah, it's perfect. My favorite thing in the world isn't competing. It's on, being on the mat with, like, awesome jiu-jitsu people and just exchanging ideas and just figuring stuff out. I can do this for hours. Like, this is my favorite thing in the world, you know? I know you want to do the move, but if you have to change the back and finish that, we'll just do it next time. We can take the back and let him replace it and go for them. <laughs> you, can, you can do whatever you want. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> we're, we're... I came here to do one move. <laughs> there you go. You heard it from him. I go, I feed the arm here, and now I have a fire off. Oh, okay. Very much fucked up. Yeah, that's right. You should have heard this motherfucker's interview out there, bro. He goes, this fucking, I'm so fucking excited. I'm really fucking honored. I'm cursing way more than I ever did in the past. Uh, I'm trying not to, but I can't help it. <laughs> They're gonna have a crazy influence on me for sure. I might become crazier hanging out with them. We'll see. <laughs> Um, everybody knows Mikey, but you know, they don't know the Daisy Fresh Mikey, so we got to introduce him. What's up guys? It's Darth Vega Tony here. I'm back competing tomorrow night. I have a new submission I invented. This move's going to revolutionize Jiu Jitsu. I'm excited to debut it tomorrow night. Stock up on the milk and bread, because after you see this submission, you're not going to want to come out of your home for weeks. This fire ass submission about to burn all y'all up. Watch out. Look, Mikey, give him a little preview real quick. All right, all right. So, uh, yeah, that was perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. That was perfect. That's it. This is about to fight y'all. <laughs> Took third at the 185 they had. I was out there with the best of them and I fared pretty well, so my confidence just went through the roof. Then like two weeks later, I did the Nogi Worlds and was fortunate enough to have a, a real good performance just because I really understood that I could do it. You know, he sees now the potential of being uh, not only great, but the champ, you know, that, that's a possibility for him now. So he's just grown so much from, from that opportunity. His Nogi Worlds, you know, like he finished his division in like under 60 seconds and submitted everyone. The tidal wave is just so big. I think him and the guys kind of live off of that energy, you know what I mean, in such a positive way. It's, a, it's really exciting, man, that the wave just keeps growing and getting bigger. It's really amazing to see how much support that he has from the jiu-jitsu community and, you know, just like, like fans in general, man. It's, it's, it's really awesome. The biscuits, the gravy, the eggs. I was a purple when I got to Pedigo. If you'd have told me within two years I would have been in the top 10 in the world for all around 185, I would have told you to shut the fuck up. Because it's like, it, I don't know, man. It, like, it kind of leaves me at a loss for words a little bit. I don't do that too much, but it, it's amazing, dude. I'm, I'm so happy. I can't, I can't wait to just keep climbing the rankings, keep competing against the best around. Hunter Colvin versus Jacob Couch, the Hillbilly Hammer. Let's get Hunter up here first. Hunter's actually on the team. I'm gonna be cornering him. Oh, 
Um, so this is awkward. Couch filled in last second. He got about a week's notice. Man, Couch is such a gamer, you know what I mean? He gets the call from Michael Sears and he's just ready to go, man, you know what I mean? So we both got like real aggressive and like finishing style, so we're both gonna be trying to finish the match the whole time. Hunter's amazing, he has big wins, he's been around for a long time, he's relatively unknown, but I think Jacob's uh, pressure is gonna be a little bit too much for him. I, th I think he's gonna get the finish around the four or five minute mark. So my name is Mikey Musumichi. I'm a black belt in making pizza and pasta, and I represent Boop's Garage PSF. Yeah, Mikey's fighting for a belt. Flo has a 25 title. One day Mikey can be the 25, 35, 45, 55, fuck around, get couches belt. No, nah, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute, man, hold on. Last year I won two divisions, Gi and Nogi. If I lose a match at 155 and I get so much like heat, but that's like two divisions above 135. So they expect me to win 155, 145, 35, and 25. You expect too much from me. <laughs> Doing my best. I used to feel so much pressure from this, but now I'm at the point where I'm used to it. You know, everyone wants to beat me, and um, if I win a match, it's expected. And if I lose a match, the world explodes. Oh, he's got his hand oh, in the it's it. Kind of sucks, but I have to accept that pressure. You know, it's a responsibility that I have having a title. You know, or winning titles in jiu-jitsu. So it's just a part of the experience. It just makes me have to work harder, and it helps me drive me to work harder. You know, so I use it to my advantage. Well, he lost to Gabriel, who's number one. I tell him, man, people don't love you or hate you because you win or lose, man. You know what you do afterwards and before. That's what makes you who you are. I think that he's slowly realizing that there's more to it than jujitsu. There's more to it than winning that if you can be happy, winning and losing isn't as important as it seems, you know? You can brush losses off. If you're a happy person, nothing else really matters. My mindset now is just, I don't really pay attention to like the result or anything. I'm just seeing it as a role in the gym with somebody and just having fun. And um, if I lose, awesome, you know, it's the same thing to me. Mikey, what's your status at these days with your journey into the dark side, the whole Darth Rigatoni thing? What's going on with you? Eight months in Nogi has changed me, you know. Uh, I used to just be into like pajamas and just training the gi with grips and stuff. Now this dark side has changed me. I have a cool name. Uh, I'm just- Secret moves? Yeah, secret moves, like just it's things have changed. How do you feel about that? That Mikey says he's got a never before seen move he's gonna try to do in the move. Oh ball. man, I'm excited to uh, see him attempt it. <laughs> I am too. So uh, Richard is a D1 wrestler, you know, which are the toughest humans alive. So I have so much respect for him. He has wins over Ty Rotulo and some really, really just solid guys. I want to debut my new submission, the Mikey Lock. And I'm really excited to try to work at this match. His entries on it are so good. I think that he's going to finish with this with this position, man. He's just so good at getting into it. And he's like hammered out all the details of the 10 possible ways that the person can defend. And it's all kind of tailored to, to, to finish uh, Richard in, in, in these positions. So I, I think he, he's going to get the submission, hammer him out. Like I think as soon as Richard actually commits to anything, I think that Mikey's going to suck him into these new positions that he has. And I think that's going to be it. Whoever has those who's number one titles to me right now is those are the top guys in the world. So for him to have that belt as a coach, as a team, and for Mikey, man, it would just be like an outstanding accomplishment for everybody. So it's a major deal, and you know, we're really excited to, to have the opportunity to be a part of all that. This is the future of jiu-jitsu, so to be able to be one of the first champions of my division, it's awesome. because he's framing my hip bone. Oh, even without the frame on the hip bone? Yeah, so you'd have to use this here. Smart little motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck did you get under me like that? Because I went on my hips because you were framing my hips. What the fuck is that? It's like a That's worm, dude. I was like, oh. <laughs> Sometimes the hotel room drill-in's the best. It's, it's cool, we, we, so we're about to head up to the, the venue. 
So, it's, you know, it's just good to just like, hang with your boys and, you know, it kind of gets the stress. Then it's, then it's the same as training, you know, it's just like being out on the mat and it's like a normal day, so. Except for Couch, he's special. <laughs> he looks like a Flintstones gummy. <laughs> Of course, the man, I was like moving around with him. I was like, this doesn't feel like regular grappling. It was like his body was like conforming to wherever my body went. I was like, this shit, this shit's stupid. This shit's stupid. I'm glad he's not 200 pounds. I'll tell you that. Darth Rigatoni and Hillbilly Hammer. We're gonna have pasta, biscuits, and gravy. <laughs> Before I compete, I like to just hang out with friends and talk shit, you know. Um, whenever I'm by myself, and I get like really nervous and shaky. But when we're just like having fun and just joking and stuff, like you kind of forget like the intensity of the match. And then the fight feels like you're just rolling and we're trying to figure out cool stuff in the match. This says American Jiu Jitsu on it, but um, we're cool with Brazilians. Like, I don't want to get shit on this. <laughs> now I'm just going to take a ton of caffeine and I'm going to get really hyper and energetic and be really annoying because I'm going to talk a lot and really fast and then we're going to have fun. You can talk faster? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Bro, this is, this is Mikey Chill right now. Three good Tony. <laughs> there are three good Tony. <laughs> I feel like I feel like we're in the cool kid corner. All the cool people are here, you know. I'm usually more like low key in a corner by myself. Now we're with all the cool people. Hey, <laughs> yes, you're the cool kid. Now I'm a cool kid. You are the cool kid. I'm not the lunch table by, by myself. <laughs> Boy, dumb as hell. He dumb as hell. I swear to God. <laughs> Smartest dumb motherfucker. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm ready. Calm, calm. <laughs> it's so hard for me to like show my personality because of my anxiety with people and things, you know. But um, I feel like when I'm around them, like I'm becoming more and more myself, you know. And I know I'm gonna be happier not having to have this wall with people, you know, just being myself and having fun. The rigatoni wrench. Rigatoni wrench. What is? What, do you have a hillbilly hammer thing, like a hammer? You got like a. Like I just a, talk funny and it does a trick. I lost my wallet like 11 times. Maybe 12 now. <laughs> I just have to forget the cameras here and then I'll be more natural. <laughs> I'm so much calmer than usual. I'm usually really quiet and like shaky. But uh, I feel really good right now. Just having fun. Just good vibes. Thank you, thank you. Let's go, baby. All right, take it easy. I'm happy as fuck. Look at what I'm doing right now in my life. It's hard not to be fucking happy. I respect him, but no, we, no need to be scared of him. Like, he this guy. We've been known that. He'd be, he'd be Roberto Jimenez. Listen, Mikey, if something happens in the match, the W is most important. Yes. Afterwards, all you'd have to say is, Richard was really tough. I wanted to debut the move next time. That's it. Okay. It's that simple. Okay, okay. So don't stress yourself out if okay. you can't get For it. Sure. The win is the most important got it. thing. 100%. But you think you got this? You think you can do this? I, have, I have zero doubts. Okay, okay. I'm very uh, confident. Believe in Mikey. Let's fucking do this shit. That's it. You're the best, dude. My vibe before fighting is like I'm cramming for a test in school, and I'm like trying to like think like, did I forget to study anything? I put a cheat code in for you. Hell yeah. Oh oh seven three seven three five nine six three. That's the code to fight Mike Tyson. Oh shit. <laughs> you got that? Yeah. Oh, you got that. You got that. So you know, fifteen ain't nothing. Ain't nothing, baby. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing, Playboy. Mm. This is a new couch. He had a water today. <laughs> chicken. I think it might real have been fried chicken. It, it might have been fried chicken, but it still. Was real. No, of course it was real, but real. <laughs> real. <laughs> oh, Gria. No, real chicken. What are you saying? Grilled. Real? Grilled. Cooked on the grill? Grilled. Grilled? How do you say it? Grilled. Grilled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More nervous about that than the match. I can't pronounce the shit the right way. Introducing first out of the blue corner, representing Elevation Fight Team, Denver, Colorado. Here is Hunter Colson. No friends in the industry. Representing Pedigo Submission Fighting, Mount Vernon, Illinois. He is the third place winner of the 2021 Who's Number One Championship and your 2021 Brown Belt No Gi World Champion. Here is.
keep tight, Cash, keep tight. Wherever we wanna be. Nice, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Nice, right to it, right to it. Atta boy, atta boy. That's it, that's it, that's it. Atta boy, hey, good try, hey, engage, engage. Hey, stay engaged, perfect, perfect. Engage. Hey, make this one count. Up, 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 up. Good, right back to it. Hey, good. Coming on top. All right. Pop it when you're ready. Heavy, heavy. Watch the leg lock entry. Hey, Jacob, restart, same thing. Take your time, catch, stay tight, that's it, that's it. Hey, focus. Jacob Couch, we meet again. Another performance, another win here at Who's Number One, another submission. Man, you are making a habit of this. You know, I gotta give the fans what the fans want, and fans wanna see some fucking jujitsu, so there's no reason going out there and playing around. Look for a submission, look for a kill. That's why we love you so much here. The Hillbilly Hammer, Jacob Couch, you win it here at Who's Number One. Congratulations. Thank you, Hal. Hey, Hal, 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 hold on, can I say something yes, real sir. quick? Uh, Gabby, I seen you like one of my pics on Instagram. You go ahead and send that direct message. I reply after I get my invoice from Flo, we go out and have a nice dinner or something. That is possibly the best call out, if we could call it that, I've ever heard here on Who's Number One. Congratulations, Jacob Gatch. Let's go. You're the, you're the best One American more. rapper ever. Listen, relax a little bit. Believe in yourself, man. You're Mikey fucking Mushi Mikey. Don't forget that. Ever. Don't fucking forget that ever. You're the best. You see, just talking to him, I got emotional. Like the energy, you know, like all the hard work we put in, all the effort. And then to see like someone like care about win, like. I got emotional, and now I feel the fire, you know, the this energy. This is my dude. This is the Let's best American this grappler shit. of all time. Bye. Tell him this. The second I felt that, all of a sudden, I went back to all the moments that I felt that myself, and just feeling it from him, it, it, it like empowered me, and I felt like like I had the fire, you know, and like he like he just won, and he gave me the fi like the fire. You just take your time. No, we don't care about the time. Just slow. Zero time. Okay. 15 minutes. Okay, perfect. You can't run for 15 minutes. Okay, 100%. As soon as he commits, it's okay. curtains. Okay. It's done. There we go, baby. Let's go, baby. For the Who's number one Bantamweight Championship, introducing first to that out of the blue corner, representing Hoops Garage PSF Las Vegas, Nevada. He is a three time Noki World Champion. Here is Darth Rigatoni, Mikey Mosumiti. Here is Richard Red Eye Hi. Oh, let's throw it. Take your time. Patty cake first. Nice. Calma, calma. Patty cake first. Good, Mikey. Just keep moving forward. Keep being aggressive from the bottom, Aries. All angles, all angles. There it is now. There it is now. Beautiful, bro. Okay, you can go. You're free. You're free. Far hip. Bring the hip. Change the grip. And finish. Hips in as well. Drop the hip too. Drop the hip. Drop the hip. Hey!
That's it. Can you believe it? It took less than 60 seconds for Mr. Michi to return to his winning ways here at Who's Number One. I know one plus one equals two. So my mindset with competing is if one plus one equals two, I could do a move, you know? So I knew every reaction, every counter the part, my partner could do, and it's just filling in the pieces of the puzzle, you know? And that's what we've been doing the last days or so, you know, couching, we've been working, uh, heat, we've just been filling in, like, what if they do this? What if they do this? The difference is, in a heel hook, you trap the foot in your armpit. The Mikey lock is trapping the foot on the neck. And the reason why this is so effective is all the heel hook counters, like turning out, kicking out, all these different counters that are really annoying in heel hooks, they don't exist in the Mikey lock. So it's so much more control than like a regular position. The pressure on the neck puts more pressure on the inside of the foot, like an inside toe hold. But it also has the heel hook pressure on the knee. So it's way more efficient in this position, way easier to get to, and way stronger, honestly. Like, you instantly feel like your foot's gonna explode. I just found out that it was 56 seconds to match, you know, so it's super cool. I'm just so happy that I invented a submission, you know, and I was able to do it in the match, you know, so it's really cool. Tight, 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 tight. That's it. Hey, let's go now, let's go. Making this count, making it, tighten it up, tighten it up. This is it, Mikey, this is it. Hey! What are you gonna do? Win. Win. You're gonna win. You know why? Because you're the fucking man. You don't forget that for one second. Hey, retake that back, Mikey. Be smart here. Stay tight. Keep your chest tight. You're gonna pull him back in. Pull him back in. We're at five minutes, halfway. Exactly halfway right now. We're up 6 0 here. Good, good grips there, Mikey. Good grips. Atta boy, atta boy. That's it. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's it. Perfect, Mikey. Perfect. Two minutes, 29 seconds, Mikey. Two minutes, 29 seconds. You know who the current champion is? Not him. You. Not him. You. All right, good here. We're restarting now. We're restarting. Watch the lapel. It's coming behind the head. 59 seconds, Mikey. 29 seconds, Mikey. 29 seconds. Nine seconds, Mikey. Five seconds, Mikey. Three, two, hey! I want to thank Heath so much for the support. He helped me so much this competition. Uh, just everyone, you know, we did it, you know. I worked so hard every day, and now I won my fourth Black Belt World title. I'm beyond happy. Bruno's a 10-time Black Belt World Champion. I mean, there's no one better that you could win a title against. And in first place, the 2021 male Brewster Wayne Champion, representing Pedagogue Submission Fighting, Michael Yusuf Messi Jr. Hey! We've been on the Who's Number One stage, but you know, the, the Gi World Championships always has this special meaning to it. So, this would be Pedagogue Submission Fighting's first adult Gi Black Belt World Champion. So, we're very, very excited about that. The team's stoked. When I started this out, uh, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old, and this is one of the dreams that I had. Hey, you want to have a student that wins a Black Belt Gi World Championship? From the grass, the World Championships Finals mat in the middle of the whole world. It doesn't get much better than that. Beautiful! Judges favor Mikey Musumichi. Hey, perfect Mikey, stay, stay, stay. That's it, that's it, Beautiful. that's it, that's it. Let's take the back one more time. Let's take the back one more time. We got two minutes and 59 seconds. You got it, you got it, you got it. That's it, hey, this is it, this is it. it, this is it. It's tight, this is it. Take the back, take the back, take the back. One more back. time, let's go. Climb, climb, good, beautiful. Hey, Mikey, there's one minute and 20 seconds here. One minute and 20 seconds, focus, focus, Mikey. Finish 
Jackie, it's deep, it's deep, it's deep. Go after it. Go, go. You got 10 seconds. Go after it. Go after it. Go after it. Go after it. Toe hold, toe hold, toe hold, toe hold. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by unanimous decision, and still, who's number one bantamweight champion, Darth Rigatoni, Mikey Musumichi. Mikey Musumichi, congratulations. Who's number one, 135 pound champion? That is one of the toughest matches I think I've ever seen you in. Tell me about it. Man, Esteban's incredible. Um, oh, thank you, Hillbilly. <laughs> Cheers. My first time drinking Mountain Dew. To so the winners go the spoils, <laughs> and the Mountain uh, Dew goes to Mikey Musumichi. <laughs> oh, it's good. <laughs> I'm all jacked up a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. <laughs> Thank you, bro. When I was a child, instead of milk or formula or anything like that, I got Mountain Dew in my bottle. And uh, Mikey, I'm sorry. Mikey informed me that he had never had Mountain Dew in his entire life. So I said, Mikey, what the fuck? One thing's for sure, two things for certain, three's a guarantee, a hillbilly's always gonna hammer, the mountain's always gonna do. Rigatoni 316. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, Amen. I never had Mountain Dew before, so what we said was, if I won this match, hillbilly hammer would come up to me with a Mountain Dew, and it would be the first time i try it, you know? So, I was excited to try it. Uh, he hyped it up so much, it has a citrus taste, but I think it's like a better Sprite, like it was really good. Let's go, oh, smile a little bit. I think he walks with his shoulders back a bit more. I see a few hairs grow on his chest. I'm all jacked up a Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh, that was my favorite part of the whole thing. I, my fight was cool, but that was the coolest thing, you know? It's like celebrating with my friends. Oh my God! Now we're just having fun, uh, running in the field. We're just, I'm just so happy. It's good to get to see him like enjoy something besides jiu-jitsu because I think everything's not predicated on winning, you know? It doesn't have to be like that. You can have friends and have special moments and have all these nice things and be happy elsewhere as well. Oh, to get to see him just glow, he's like glowing. He's smiling so much, he's so happy. It's just a great experience to get to see him kind of flourish as a person too. Like I said, he fits right in with the guys, man. He's just like instantly part of the Daisy Fresh crew and has nothing to do with his success at Jiu Jitsu. It's just, he's just a cool dude, you know what I mean? And I'm really happy as a coach watching those relationships blossom and, uh, you know, everybody just be happy. Hey, listen, I'm really proud of you, bro. Thank you, all, dude. All, all the stuff that, that we've got past the last couple of months, man, it's a new you. Proud Thank of you so I'm, much. I'm dude. proud of you, yeah, man. I'm bro, gonna, I'm gonna leave you with Simone. I appreciate you. Thank You're the you. man. You're the best. Thank you so much, dude. I suffer from very bad depression, and basically the only thing that gets me out of my depression is whenever I'm helping others, because I feel like I have a purpose, you know? When I don't feel like I have a purpose, I don't like even feel like living anymore, you know? Or when I'm training with my friends in the gym, helping them with a move, and then enjoying learning a move, like that made me feel like I have a purpose. So then that would give me like a reason to still be here, you know? So it's always about, for me, helping others, and that's what I feel like life is about. Because tomorrow I could die, right? The next day we could die. The next day someone's gonna win this belt. What lasts? Our influence on others, you know? And that, I think, is the biggest purpose in life, us influencing others. If you don't influence others, you have no purpose in life, you know? Helping others, I think, is the most important thing. I think not only is uh, Mikey gonna win multiple world championships. I think that he's going to start pumping guys out that are going to be doing the same as well. So I think he's going to be giving back to the sport just as much as he's taking titles away. These titles are nothing, you know, they're bullshit. What matters in life is our relationships with people. Like this team, everyone is like family, you know, like they all cry for each other, win or lose, you know, they get emotional for each other. This is the first time I'm on a team where I feel that, you know, and it's incredible. So it's a family, you know, that's the difference. And that's what I'm feeling now, you know, and I'm feeling less judge judgment. 
So when you feel less judgment, it makes you feel more free to be yourself, you know? Like, I don't feel that fear, like, what if I lose? Are they gonna still be my friend and nice to me, you know? So I felt that my whole life, and uh, I feel like I don't have to feel that anymore. And that makes me feel kind of free. He's just uh, somebody that needed to fit in the right place. Uh, he's had a lot of great coaches, but I don't know that he's had a lot of great teams. I had a bad taste in my mouth for competing from the ways I've done in the past. Now I'm having fun, you know, and Heath is really helping me to learn how to have fun. And I think that my results are going to be a lot better now that I have this positivity in my life, you know, and I'm really excited about this. Heath is like, besides being incredible with jiu-jitsu, he's like a, a parent figure for me, you know, like he helps me with life things, you know. For me, my whole life, all I've done is jiu-jitsu. I wasn't a teenager ever, you know. My teenage years were just pure training in the gym. Just that's it, you know. So I never got the chance to like socialize and hang out with other kids and like learn those skills. So Heath has been teaching me a lot about that stuff and it's helping my jiu-jitsu as well because I'm feeling mentally better, you know. And I'm just learning to have more fun and be calmer and just, we only live once, right? So we have to enjoy life, you know. And I'm really trying to learn how to enjoy life now. He could literally go anywhere he wanted on the planet. There's a reason he is with us. Mikey doesn't need us for jiu-jitsu. Everyone knows that. But he is drawn to the camaraderie. He's drawn to the, the love and the passion that Heath has for jiu-jitsu and for us as, as students. Sometimes you don't realize what you're a part of. Them hearing that these such major, you know, players in the game, you know, multiple time world champions, that they want to join our team. I just think it's such a confidence booster for everybody. You know, not only are the results showing on the mat, but they're showing off the mat, just with people, you know, growing as humans and just being happier. And that's every bit as important to me as the winning. So uh, I just think all in all, it's really just starting to feel like it was meant to be, you know what I mean? And I can't express enough how happy I am about everything that's going on with the team and the association. And it's just, uh, you know, it, like I said, the Daisy Fresh Army just constantly grows. The one that wins. Other one. Left? No, right. Left. <laughs> so he's a fuck with me, right? <laughs> the easiest person in the world to fuck with. What? What kind of energy you got? Big dick energy. BD? Big D. <laughs> do, you, do you see him? That's a bad word for him. <laughs> Look at that athlete. Mike, he's the most athletic, non athletic person ever in history. Oh, what's up? Is that my money? <laughs> I signed a contract when I moved to PSF. He told me he'd give me a real good deal. All he needs is 99% of all my earnings, and then he would coach. So I figured it was a fair trade. Look at him now. Yeah, I got $3. Asking out, asking out movie stars. Yeah. <laughs> Rondo Moss, Pedagogy Submission Fight in Mount Vernon, Illinois, USA. What do you, what do you, how long have you been training at Pedagogy? You know, like seven years almost. And only a purple belt. So, I mean, I've known you a long time. I never knew. Is this always been something you always wanted to be a cowboy or what? When I started wearing the hat, everybody started calling me Concrete Cowboy. And I was like, you know what? I think I might take on the cowboy identity. And so I think, I, I, I think it was meant for me, you know what I mean? So I, I had to take up the mantle. You know, I, I, I inherited it. I didn't want it, but the life chose me, so. Yo, we got victory pizza here. Um, Post-match, we like to eat pizza. Uh, it's been good luck. We're here eating some pizza. A pizza mangia fratello. What he said? I said eat brother in Italian. <laughs> I'm ready to eat pizza. Yeah, we're ready to eat some pizza, but we're gonna go to a hotel now. Murdering Murdochs. I don't know if they piss me off or I love them. I think right now, all together, including the parking lot and the gym, I think there's 21. Right now we're all in ADCC prep mode, getting ready for the trials. Welcome to Philly Cheesesteak Land. This is my first trials ever and also the deepest trials ever. It's something I dreamed about since I was like a white belt. We're not done shocking the world yet. Fight the grips, couch! Don't fucking stop! Don't stop! Don't stop! Yeah.